Hello, everyone. Welcome to our second virtual program on algorithmic sound. I'm Helen Coe, and I am the director of Creative GC Art and Science Connect. It's an initiative at the CUNY Graduate Center that brings together art and science in innovative programming and thoughtful conversation, such as we have today. I'd like to thank the James Family Charitable Foundation and the Al Held Foundation for making this program possible. Now I'll turn it over to Jacob. Hi, thanks, Helen. This week, we're excited to be joined by Malitzen Cortez. Malitzen, aka CNDSD, is a live coder and truly multidisciplinary artist with a background in architecture, video art, 3D animation, sound design, and all sorts of other things. She's also a researcher and teacher at the Autonomous National University of Mexico. And today, her masterclass will focus on her live coding composition process with tidal cycles. So without further delay, welcome Malitzen. Thank you very much. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> Let me share my screen. Live coding is a new direction in electronic music and video. In recent years, the practice has reflected on itself and begins to evolve, reaching inhospitable and interesting places. It is a stage practice and a creativity technique focused on writing the source code in real time and the use of interactive programming in an improvised way to can be combined with a pre-written algorithm composition. Although the use of algorithms or set of formal rules in musical composition is not new. In fact, it has been used by musicians such as Mozart, John Cage, Mauricio Cagle, and many others. Programming and computers come from much further, electroacoustic and generative, mathematical and algorithmic music. Make us think of authors like Yanis Senakis, who throw the UPIC a key complex composition interpreted by this machine that the same musician designed to create the type of music he imagined. On the other hand, generative music is a concept that has existed for more than 15 years and has been gaining importance in music production as artificial intelligence systems and technologies improve. Brian Eno is one of the main pioneers of this method of composition. In 1906, he defined it as a system or a set of rules that once put into action will automatically create music for you. In other words, the producer put the rules in a language in which the machine can interpret them to generate music. Another predecessor of the practice of light coding is as to the calculation of probabilities for its composition, obtaining apparently indeterminate music but with a predictable general structure. Live coders expose and reconnect from deep within the software while generating improvised music and images. In most cases, all code manipulation is projected and this method cuts across all musical genres. More than a style, it's a way of doing it. However, the mastery of new tools has shown that I can reach new and hybrid forms to electronic music or sound experimentation. There is also a strong movement for video-based live coding, writing code to create images, and many environments can generate sound and video parallel, creating synesthetic experiences. Live coding has its own custom programming languages, some of which are simple as a 1970s computer interfaces, 
with lines of code entered on a black screen. Many of them are free to download and use, with documentation and examples to get you started, and friendly online communities to help you when you are in trouble. Popular like coding softwares include Tidal Cycles, Chalk, Sonic Pi, Luxus, Pure Data, and the mother of all, Super Collider. In the case of Tidal Cycle, it emerged specifically for live coding. It is designed in a functional programming language called Haskell, which allows it to be highly compressed in its syntax. It works through the nesting of functions and expressions, which generates speed to write an algorithm idea in the real time or to be personalized with, for example, polyphonic, polyrhythmic, generative, and others. It also has an extensive library of pattern functions that, in combination, can quickly create complex patterns from simple ingredients. Tidal does not produce sound in its home, but it's designed for use with super dirt synthesizer and can control other synthesizers via open sound control or MIDI. It works primarily it's a large orchestrator and sequencer that runs on Super Collider. The local Mexican live coding scene at the Multimedia Center was born and prospered from 207 to 2012 and then left this cultural space and became one more actor in the different scenes and communities. The first live coding season was organized in such a way that two participants program audio and video from scratch in 15 minutes. That is the classical way. The first session was possible thanks to the large community of Super Collider users around the multimedia center that began to form in 207 from a series of workshops of Super Collider and Fluxus. Super Collider and Fluxus binomial was the trigger for the nascent national scene. In November 2012, the first symposium on musical and code called Vivo, dedicated to the live coding, was organized. Through the world, the practice has evolved today with an active community in more than 20 countries. On the other hand, TopLab is an organization funded in 204 dedicated to exploring and promoting the live coding in its different nodes, made up communities around the world. To this day also, TopLab MX is a collaborative space where its concerts, workshops, exhibitions and other activities related to the practice in Mexico and Latin America are organized. I wish uh, the, the message is clear about the live coding, <laughs> the live coding scene in Mexico. Here it's, uh, we have a, a, a really um, compromised compromise, uh, community, I guess. It's not the, the, the most bigger in the world, but, but the people involved in live coding, uh, it's, it's super interested to share all, always the, the, the learning, the share uh, the programs, the share the concerts and, and everything. I want also show you another video, but this video is uh, focused about tidal cycles. I want first uh, show this and after that explain uh, with tidal and super collider what is my process to to go to to make composition and also uh, to make a, a live act in, in real time. The composer is telling the computer what kind of sounds he wants. Okay, well, as the name of this talk says, functional programming in live coding, which is titles, composition and improvisation proposal, we will begin to understand syntax as well the time and sequentiality in this environment. Um, but what is functional programming? What is the difference? 
let's see. Imperative languages are considered less flexible given the sequentiality in which they build their instructions. Their languages program through conditional orders and a command block to which they return once the function has been carried out. And in another hand, functional languages, also called procedural, they are languages that are programmed through functions that are invoked according to the input received, which in turn are the result of other functions. Tidal is created in Haskell, which is a high-level functional programming language. The high-level language aims to facilitate the programmer's work since there are instructions that are easier to understand. In addition, the high-level language allows to write codes using languages that we know, like Spanish, English, etc. And then, to be executed, it is translated into machine language by translator or compilers. And being functional allows you to easily deduce and even prove that a function is correct and they build more complex functions by joining simple functions. In other words, it observes a computational context and infer the type. A simple example of an imperative language is Java, and the most popular ID for creative code is processing. When I write a code in processing, which has a known syntax with functions, conditionals, variables, etc., I write it in an orderly manner and this sequence of events are compiled, so generating the result of program. That one running cannot be modified until I close the program, modify it, save it, and run it again. In Tidal, it does not work in this way. And this thanks another great paradigm in live coding, that it's Super Collider. In the specific case of Tidal, I do not need to run the whole program to be able to have a result. That's it execute and save it. I can modify on the fly, and I can also generate sets of isolated sketch algorithms in the same. And this will not be changed unless I ask it. That is to say, I can run algorithms separately, no matter the order of them, but even though the order is always imported in music. Let's now go deeper Haskell, but it's important to know why this programming paradigm was analyzed by Alex McLean. He thought about the needs of live coding. This program had to be able to sequence orders by code quickly, be generative, simple, complex, and dynamic at the same time. And yes, the sequence is important, because Tidal has the most amazing sequencer, and it's important to understand a cycle. A cycle is the main time loop in Tidal. The cycle repeats forever in the background, even when you stop playing the samples. Cycle leg always stays the same unless you modify it with seed CPS. We'll cover that later. By default, there's one cycle per second. The omnipresent cyclic loop doesn't necessarily limit you. For example, it's common to stretch a pattern out of a single loop and do variation with the patterns from one loop to another. Ok, let's see the minimum you need to call a sound once Super Collider is listening to Tidal. Let's see how it's implemented. This is the first line of testing after installation just to know that everything is running properly. Tidal works with samples, syndefs and also MIDI. In this example, we're going to call a folder where I have certain amount of samples. The layer for calling is that call D1. After that, I evoke the dollar functions to call sound function. Between quotes goes the sound folder. Then the number symbol is another function. I call effect or gain function and lastly assign a value to this parameter. Let's yeah, it'd be great to see some of your process and we'll, we'll answer some questions as they come in. Okay, we need beginning uh, with the Super Collider ID because without Super Collider, Tidal can sound never in the life. <laughs> it's for that, it's important always uh, have running Super Collider. And after that, I need also start in, in Atom. Uh, you can use also Sublime if you want. 
but in the atom uh, works super fine. And you need also uh, a start, uh, uh, sorry, put tidal cycles here. And I want to explain first the very minimum first example. I start with the, just the minimum, the minimum line to, to make sound here in Tidal. Okay, and let me put the gain also. Okay, let's go. Perfect, cool. So I want to- repeating once cycle yes yes let me hush all <laughs> for the moment it's important that because tidal cycles starts uh like this one cycle per second but you can change that uh, like in another other software for do music with set cps uh, set cps by default it's like that okay okay but you can subdivide this time. And also you can do that. Maybe like this is more clear for everyone. Something like that. Okay. And it's important to say uh, Tidal use uh, samples, syndefs and MIDI, but this sound or this uh, BD it's not just uh, one sound. It's a folder uh, with other sounds inside. Here uh, you can see all these, these files with samples. Uh, when you download Tidal Cycles, uh, you can have a, a default collection of samples, a little bit disordered, but uh, they are amazing for, for start uh, making music with Tidal. And after you can, uh, you can put another more samples and you can use uh, recordings, you can use Foley, but it's important to say uh, only uh, web uh, files works in Tidal. If you put AIF or MP3, don't work, only web. Let me put another in this pattern. Okay. Maybe it's too low. I exaggerate like this. Maybe like this is 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 better. I explain with a pattern visualizer how the time works here in Tidal. Visualizer is a tool uh, programmed by my fiance. He's uh, also musician, he's um, artist and programmer, and do this, this treasure just to show how the, how the time works uh, in Tidal and to visualize the patterns. This is programmed with, uh, with processing using a OSC protocol. I want to show first the the normal syntax in Tidal, because here uh, the syntax is a little different, but that is because I need use these things for a uh, use the visualizer. Okay, we can we can see what happens now. <laughs> Not only listen. Even I can hear put effects and everything I want. I put just a, a pan effect. This effect is normalized zero for right and one for left. And I put a lot of folders here. These folders are the default folders in Tidal. Okay.
Let me go show. If you don't organize the pattern inside the, the sound function, Tidal try to put all the sounds together. This is without order. Okay, Tidal try to put all in, in this in this cycle, but Tidal have a super different ways to uh, order the the samples in in a cycle. Molly, can I yes. can I interrupt just for one second? Um, yes. Before you move on to the next bit of this, uh, we just have a few questions about the visualizer. Can you tell us the name of the software being used as the timeline visualizer? You said that was in processing? It's in processing, yes. And to get the uh, script to run that in processing, is that public? Yes, it's public. I want to share uh, this GitHub because it's really, really new. We upload this uh, the last week, <laughs> but okay. we want to share uh, for everyone. So maybe we'll get the GitHub from that and put it in the chat towards the end or something. That's exciting yes. though. Thank you for making that public. Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> it's and for everyone. <laughs> that's so awesome. Um, the other question was, if you could explain the data flow between Tidal and processing and, and I guess also uh, any other software that's running. All, all the data in, in Tidal uh, throw like super collider. It's for that I need, uh, in, this, in this case, I need an IP, IP sorry, uh, for connect all and uh, for invoke this IP in super collider and send uh, the messages uh, and, and with, with this information or with this data, uh, I draw inside in, in, in the visualizer. It's something like that, <laughs> but it's a little more, uh, it's a little more complicated. May, let, me, let me show the, the code in, in Tidal. This is the code for import the OSCC library in, in Tidal. But when you go to the to the website, the tidal cycles, all the the OSC protocol is very well explained that. And uh, this is the this is the a structure in Haskell. But this structure it's uh, programmed before uh, for Alex McLean all in Haskell because uh, Ivan and I don't don't know clearly Haskell. Haskell it's really really complicated I guess, but uh, but Ivan it's a, a a very very heavy programmer in in processing. Is for that he can um, improve that uh, in processing. But the 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 concept uh, the central concept to this tool is uh, sending messages between uh, tidal and processing. It's for that uh, we can also control in uh, lights, we can control in uh, visuals with processing or with Hydra or with Resolume Arena or everything. Uh, but trust me, the OSCC implementation in Tidal, it's really, really easy to expand uh, the, the Tidal possibilities. Cool. So all of the programs you're using, it's Tidal cycles as a sequencer, super collider as a synthesizer, and uh, processing as a visualizer. Yes, in this in this case, yes. When I use when when I uh, do music, I use a super collider and uh, sometimes another synth external synthesizers because in Tidal it's possible uh, send uh, a MIDI data. Thank you. And and then the last question from the Q and A, and then mm -hmm. uh, yes, yes. I want to know the commands to execute a code uh, line. It's really easy. Uh, in fact, it's more easy than Super Collider or, an, or other um, like coding program because mm -hmm. you run a code with control and enter, but it's not necessary you are in the end of the old algorithms. You can uh, be here, you can be here, you can be here. And, and and the execution works. It's for that Tidal it's a planet to live coding because when you you write uh, in a live act, maybe you can put so much attention in the wrong uh, when you declare uh, an algorithm. 
it's for that when I put my, my mouse here and click Control Enter, here or here works. Okay. I explained uh, all the samples are compressed here, but when I, I put uh, square brackets, I can subdivide the, 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 the time here or the patterns here for do parallel composition like this. Let me try just with two for do it more clear. With this syntax, I do a parallel composition. Okay. The two events uh, pass in the same time. I can I can put another more. RP. RP is fine. Right. Okay. Okay, in this in this way all is parallel. But when I change the, the multiplication or subdividing like this, maybe I want, I want more BD sounds. I'm use another function more and is for um, evoke uh, different sounds inside these uh, these folders. Let me try with another more. <laughs> When you use the square brackets, you can uh, you can do parallelism about the the sounds, and it's for that it's too easy do rhythm in tidal cycles and also do complex algorithms uh, with simple sounds. For example, uh, I try to do the same, but I add also other other effects like this. Slow is a function to subdivide the, the time without change all my all my CPS in my composition. Let me show. I can subdivide more. It's better like this. And obviously I can also accelerate all the time with this slow function. And do another another kind of rhythms. Controlling the time with the slow. I want to change the sound for our sound more interesting. Okay, uh, it's important to say also the indexation in Tidal uh, starts in zero. It's for that when you don't put this function, the, the function n, the sample to play is the zero sample inside uh, this inside the folder. It's for that it's always the same. But you can change that dynamically with this function. I want to use uh, the third sample inside the folder. I don't remember all my new sounds. I need to see my, my folders here, uh, maybe with band. 
For example, the band sound, it's a recording of the band, the Argentinian bandoleon, <laughs> a personalized uh, file here in Tidal, but it's really easy. Just uh, you recording or download your sounds and you create a file uh, here uh, in Super Collider. You have this uh, file, Download Quarks, and inside this Download Quarks, uh, you can see the dirt samples. And inside your samples, you have all the, all the default samples and you can add uh, everything you want. It's for that, I, I guess, in my process. I really love the classic sounds of Tidal because are the, the first one I use for improvise uh, and do some tracks. But uh, I'm also a, a sound designer. And it's for that I, I, I love use uh, in my music composition, all kind of uh, recordings, uh, folly recordings, uh, weird instruments, my voice. I don't know. We have a lot of questions now. Oh One, my God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the first question is uh, asking if you mostly use samples or if you also generate sounds in Super Collider. Mm, it's a really good question. Super Collider had also, when you start with Tidal, a scene depths by default. Let me share that, uh, that file. Uh, Super Deep Setup, uh, scene depth. Okay, if you know Super Collider, uh, you can also do your own scene depths and you can uh, evoke uh, that sounds here. And it's amazing because uh, in Super Collider, when you use when you use samples, you can change the the number of the file. But when you use a synth, you can uh, use notes also. It's for that you can you can do a melodic uh, progression with the synths. Let let me show uh, one. These synths are my my personal collection of synths. Mm -hmm. Because uh, sometimes not all the scene devs I had uh, works inside Tidal. Because <laughs> I want I, I love uh, Super Collider for do noise, <laughs> and maybe uh, when I try to make a sequence uh, with with that scene devs don't works properly. <laughs> but uh, maybe I I want try with a, a default scene dev in Tidal. Let me try with Super Piano. Super piano, it's a piano, a classic piano, but this is a synth. Let me show you here, uh, showing scope. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Okay, and with N function, you can play notes uh, with the American notation. slowly to understand uh, the the functions and the sounds inside uh, the sound function uh, works uh, equal i mean uh, when you put the things uh, simply simple like this uh, tidal try to to compress the things but uh, when you use square brackets or or parentheses uh, like uh, logarithmic uh, operations uh, you can subdivide the time. 
let me show you um, here if I want to uh, do a parallelism uh, in these notes uh, for, for create a chart, uh, I put also the square brackets like this. I have a really horrible short. <laughs> Okay, wow. um, it's clear. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, very clear. That was really interesting. So I have a question. Um, yes. about what you were doing before this part. Um, and I was going to ask how you use like sort of longer sustaining sounds in tidal cycles. Because so far what we've seen, it's a lot of kind of like very short percussive sounds. But then when you incorporated the band sound, that was the first longer sound we heard. You can use a uh, once, for example, once is a function uh, for do this just for once. <laughs> it's it's really easy. Let me try with a with a large sound. Maybe this. Okay, this is the 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 the, the easy way, <laughs> but you can also uh, do experimentations or something like a granular uh, effects uh, in a in a large sound uh, using this. Let me show you. Uh, it's interesting because uh, all the time, well, like uh, tidal, it's a sequencer for for nature. Uh, sometimes. Uh, maybe uh, he give you uh, an idea you can uh, only do with tidal uh, percussive things but uh, not not i i don't think so because uh, it's true uh, tidal it's uh, control control patterns in the time but i think in music like like uh, ambiental music or or minimal music uh, you can have a really, really, really big pattern with uh, changes uh, so far <laughs> to the to the first. Uh, maybe when you combine slow and another function, straight. I want to use the the same the same sample. Okay, S is is the is the same. Okay. explain this I add other other uh, effects uh, like up up is for change the the pitch in in the in the sample reproduction and cut is for cutting the the sample 
Uh, it means uh, the sample can be super large uh, during, uh, I don't know, uh, 30 seconds or something like that. But with cut, uh, you force it to cut in, in, in each cycle. And also it's, it's straight. It's straight, it's like a do an accordion with the sample. Uh, applies a, a, a straight in the, in the sample. It's for that when you combine these things, you can uh, do really cool things, also ambiental things. And even I can uh, put another sample more. Oh, let me let me think why. Maybe this. Basically, you can do uh, some, some strange things uh, to the sound because you can do classic structures to make uh, classic genres, but you can uh, also do a thing, a really experimental things with Tidal because you have a, an amazing control uh, to the sample. That was amazing. That was so interesting to see, to see you handling these different types of samples and all the different textures that can come out of it. We have a few slightly more general questions, if that's okay with you. Yes, it's perfect. To me, okay. it's perfect. The first is kind of about your choice to use Tidal over other software. So they're saying, with all the different music tools available, how did you decide that Tidal Cycles was the right tool for you? I use uh, Ableton Live uh, first. To, to do um, sound design and also to do um, musical ex experiments. I don't know, but uh, after I, I start with the creative coding with processing, and after that, uh, I, I know Super Collider. I, I, I start to, no, I know Super Collider, it, it's, I, I don't want to say that because Super Collider is really hard. <laughs> it's really hard to know him. It's amazing. It's really beautiful. Uh, I love Super, Coll Super Collider and, and I use Super Collider uh, all the time. But when I start to learn Tidal, uh, to me, uh, it's like a, a, a mind blow because First, the syntaxes. The syntaxes are uh, maybe uh, in the in the in the first look. It's a little uh, so abstract, I guess, because you need uh, uh, less code to do uh, a lot of things. Also, can be a little confusing in the in the beginning, I guess. The way the tidal manipulate the sound. And the control I have in the in the real time when I do live coding, uh, it's for that tidal. I, I love tidal for that, because <laughs> because tidal have uh, uh, this logic. You have a, a, a learning curve, uh, less aggressive, I guess, uh, of uh, super collider. Uh, do you don't need uh, no uh, hard programming to to start with with Tidal, but I guess uh, also Tidal it's it's so um, intuitive for for understand uh, the the most basic uh, things in the music the rhythm uh, the time uh, organize uh, the sound and the and the silence in, in the time it's for that uh, to me Tidal it's for now, it's my my really big passion. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know uh, after, <laughs> but uh, it's for that. I, I really love love this tool. Also, I can control in video because also I had a 
are really passionate about the live cinema and the synesthetic, audiovisual experiences. Ah, I want to show uh, just for finish uh, some uh, examples uh, about the, the synesthetic uh, concerts uh, with Tidal and processing. That would be great. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it's for that uh, I love Tidal and I want everyone love Tidal also. Maybe it's not for all the people. Uh, some people tell me, no, it's too easy. <laughs> really, <laughs> <laughs> really, really, I promise. <laughs> it's interesting looking at all of these different options for uh, programming generative music or even like Ableton to make, you know, whatever, just a more traditional approach to electronic music. But uh, it's just interesting to see the different perspectives and the different levels of abstraction that each of these programs can give you. Um, but, it, but it's also, I'm really interested to hear that this one is kind of like a little bit more direct for you, but, uh, <laughs> funny that people would say it's too easy. <laughs> I don't know. To me, Tidal, it's not, it's not easy. It's intuitive to mm -hmm. me, or maybe it's because it's another para paradigm in, in live programming. Live coding, it's, it's super free. It's, it's super uh, collaborative. But uh, like in other genres uh, or communities of music, have a, um, a classical thinking. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, it would be great to see some of the uh, visual. Let me show you uh, some some concerts. Uh, these concerts are so special to me because uh, are with my my. Uh, my new musical material, my new EP. One it's in Korea and the, another one it's in Mutech, Mexico. Uh, I want to explain a little, a little bit. In this case, we use the, the same logical in processing to connect with OSC processing to make these uh, generative effects in video. Uh, the, this programming for Ivan Abreu. Ivan Abreu, it's, uh, <laughs> it's my boyfriend and he plays with me. <laughs> in this case, we want to share the code within, within another way, more, not in the classical way of live coding. When you do live coding, it's commune, uh, share the code to the public and, uh, and with the other coders to understand what happens inside. In this case, uh, we want to... Uh, don't don't show the 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 code, but we 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 want to uh, show this code. It's uh, the the real code. I means uh, the values over time. Uh, it's here uh, we can see sound delay feedback gain uh, speed blah blah blah. It's uh, like a show uh, a, a really really deep uh, layer in the in the live coding composition. Also control the lights in the stage with tidal. Uh, I mean, tidal uh, in this in this particular uh, live act, controlling everything, even us. <laughs> I guess I stopped to share my screen because uh, 
I don't know. <laughs> I guess the time is over. We, we have time for a couple more questions, if that's okay with you. Okay, perfect. It's perfect right. for me. Now, well, first of all, that was amazing. It, so so <laughs> cool to see um, the collaboration and between the uh, visuals and the sound. Um, I think this would be a good question relating to that. Uh, from Simon, how do you come up with algorithms and patterns in the moment while playing live? Do you have favorite ones you keep coming back to? In this, in this moment, I think I have a, a collection of my favorite algorithms, not only the sounds. The, I have a, a, a really big collection of sounds, but I, it, about that, I'm like a, it's, a, it's like an addiction to me because I uh, listen to something, I want recorded and put it in Tidal. And it's, it's for that I have a lot of, of folders with, with sounds. But when you improvise or when I, I in home, I try to, to use and test uh, all these folders just for, for uh, search these special sounds with a combination of, of algorithm, I guess. Because uh, Tidal is a generative tool. It's like in processing, maybe you can put uh, some things, some, some algorithm or, or some, some program and, and, and you run it and, and the image is super cool, super fine. But when you change one parameter or two, it's a disaster, <laughs> something like that. In, in, in Tidal, uh, it's very similar because uh, you can, uh, with the time, you can uh, have control, or I, I guess, total control. To me, uh, it's like to see the matrix. I saw uh, uh, an algorithm and I, and I think, ah, okay, I know what to uh, do, but the, 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 the identity of the sample can change all. It's for that uh, I have my... my my collection of percussions for a start. And after that, I really love improvise in, 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 in that algorithm, change things, change sounds, uh, uh, put uh, some identities. Maybe I have also uh, an order in my folders for identity. This is identity more dark. And this is identity more Asian or mm -hmm. I don't know, <laughs> something like that. Right. So, so you sort of start with an algorithm and then you improvise by changing it. So there's like some parts of it that are uh, pre-coded before the performance. It depends the context, because in a big concert like music or on a festival, uh, Ivan and I, uh, I love uh, really prepare or act, mm -hmm. uh, have an audiovisual narrative, and share a, a vision with 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 the the music and the and the visuals. Mm -hmm. um, I improvise a little always because I'm a, <laughs> I can I can uh, stop to <laughs> to do that. But less when when it's a, a, a concert like this. But when I play in in other in other in other spaces. Uh, I don't know, maybe in the beginning, I, I, I really love it start in zero, start from scratch, because it's a start from scratch, it's a way to, to exercise uh, your, your thinking when you, when you code. But when I want to, to, to do a good concert, uh, to do a, a, a nice sound experience, Maybe I have a, 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 a base algorithm and continue improvising in it, yes. So throughout, let's say you were gonna have kind of a long set, would you have one base algorithm that you continue using throughout the full set? Or do you have sort of like, would you ever switch from one to the next, kind of like switching from one song to the next? Yes, uh, works something like that because, mm. uh, for example, in this in this concert, we had five scenes, five scenes with uh, in the same code. Maybe other coders do it uh, different, but I have a a a, a really big code because uh, we had the the algorithm for the music, but also the algorithm for controlling the lights and for uh, controlling the generative visuals. It's for that. 
because all is uh, connected uh, by OECC. Uh, and when I have a, I don't know, an algorithm, an algorithm do boom, tan, boom, tan, the visual do it the same, but not it's for the, for the, for the game. It's because are uh, connected to the tidal pattern. It's for that, it's really, really precise. And you can uh, do the things with a lot of control. Wow, that's, that's so interesting. Um, yeah, I love the, the really visceral connection between the lights and the visuals and the sounds in that video. Thank you. So somebody is asking if you ever use analog equipment with CV uh, control voltages. Um, so they're asking, do you ever use MIDI to CV or Arduino modules or Euro rack or anything like that? Okay, uh, for example, in that concert, the, the light control it's with Arduino. Mm. With, we, we made a, a little box with Arduino and the uh, very common lights because we don't, we don't use uh, the DMX. It's not DMX, it's Arduino, <laughs> one Arduino, uh, cables and uh, big lamps. And with processing, controlling uh, uh, that, that, uh, that light. Mm -hmm. uh, and the instruments, uh, you can also control in a, a modular if you want. Uh, if you have, if you have a, 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 a rack, uh, if possible, connect uh, a digital MIDI with your modular. It's completely possible. I use uh, a mini cork uh, for it. Uh, use a synthesizer. It's like I use um, a very, very big super collider, <laughs> I guess, because uh, in super collider, you can do also super interesting synthesizer to use it in inside Tidal. Uh, I don't recommend a uh, connect as sequencers because Tidal, it's a sequencer. Have no sense uh, connecting uh, that. Uh, but if you, if you have um, a sound, uh, a sound um, output, sorry, a sound input, you can connect it in, in Tidal and you can control it. Great. Um, next question. How do you use Tidal Cycle outside of live performance? Is it a major part of your sound design and composition process as well? I guess today, obviously for this situation, for this terrible situation, pandemic situation, I use more Tidal uh, for, for composition. Uh, all, my, all my music is, is uh, composed uh, in Tidal cycle, on Tidal Cycles. And um, it's very useful, and I I also teacher, and all the time uh, I try to learn about uh, tidal, but in a more environment in in an environment of the sound design, and we can uh, produce atmospheres uh, with tidal, and that is really cool. The the my students love it because it's more uh, quickly. Uh, when you when you um, start to to be familiar with tidal, it's really quickly do changes and and also um, do generative things, you know. And maybe for for an animation or a movie, uh, that works really fine. When you teach tidal cycles, is that in a uh, general music technology class, or is it a class specifically about live coding? I have a class uh, more uh, classical for music composition. Mm -hmm. And I have another class uh, very exciting about sound sonification data, because I try to do uh, sonification data with Tidal. It's completely mm -hmm. possible, but uh, not in the traditional way. I mean, for do that, uh, I prefer use super collider. You put uh, the data in super collider and the scene depths and we do it, we do it, all it starts to sound. But in Tidal, uh, I try to, to, to do an approach more uh, compositional for the sound data. Uh, do uh, more, um, more informative music or, or something like that. And uh, with my students, I try to, 
to do uh, a narrative with data, but putting in, in order and controlling everything with Tidal and works really, really nice. Wow, that's incredible. What kind of data sets do you use and do your students use? Everything almost, I guess. Uh, uh, one, one student tried to sonificate uh, the, the different sounds in the old arcade consoles. And we organized the time uh, like cycles and we use the samples uh, for, for, um, for that arcade. And we had a, a, a track uh, with four or five minutes uh, counting that, that history. Wow. Yes, you, you can use uh, everything, I guess. Cool, that's awesome. Um, I wish I could take that class, that sounds- But in Spanish, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so it looks like we have time for a few more questions. Here's a question from James Parker. Is Tidal using the Super Collider pattern library as its foundation? Are there ways for Tidal to use the other parts of the pattern library? In the beginning of my life uh, with uh, like Light Coder, yes. I, I do... Um, rhythmic music with super collider but i guess uh, not normally i i prefer to noise or some some things more ambient or drone with super collider but i use uh, uh, patterns also in, in in super collider but uh, in tidal it's more quickly <laughs> awesome okay so i think we have let's finish up we'll do one more question okay. uh what is the advantage of implementing uh, super collider into tidal cycles over sequencing directly in super collider? And I guess you've already been kind of talking about this uh, a bit, mm. but maybe uh, maybe we can end with a couple of words on that. I want to say so, uh, tidal like a sequencer because it's a sequencer, <laughs> but mm. you can use all the incredible environment in in super collider because uh, maybe in in sampling you can have an identity, but when, but if you uh, love the synthesizers and you have, if you want to have that, uh, that, that feeling, uh, not sampling, just synthesizer, uh, to me, uh, it's, it's, it's really, really, really easy uh, compose uh, melodical sequence, sequences. It's like I have a, a modular, but but this modular, it's it's all uh, writing. You you need write. What do you want to do? Uh, but you can use all the 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 effects, all the 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 feeling the super collide super collider provides. I guess. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, I think we are just about out of time. Malisa, is there anything else that you wanted to uh, share or talk about while we have a couple minutes? I want to invite, invite, uh, invite for all the people here uh, to see the Kingdom tutorials. Kingdom, it's a, a, a amazing uh, American like coder, <laughs> and he had a, a, a stunning, a stunning tutorials, uh, much better than mine because he speaks English <laughs> in first. He's my friend, and, and I, I want, I highly recommend. Uh, um, see that tutorials and and also I want to to share with you the the github implementation for understand uh, a little more clear uh, the, the patterns on the time in Tidal. Great thank you yeah I think um I think somebody had found and posted a, a link in the chat to the github for the pattern visualizer. Hi, amazing uh, thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, that's um, cool. So that's awesome. And thank you for recommending the, uh, that resource of the Kindom uh, tutorials. I'll definitely be checking those out. Um, so yeah, I guess we will. Okay, actually, uh, Javal is asking for a link to Kindom. Uh, yes, give me a second. I, sure, maybe sure. I, I have here. Uh, he had a, um, a YouTube channel. Great. Uh, his music is amazing also. Uh, kingdom, um, is it is it under his YouTube page, Mike Hodnick? Yes, 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 it's Mike Hodnick. Okay, 
Okay, gotcha. Here we go. Oh, it looks like somebody beat me to it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, cool. awesome. Well, thank you so much, Nalitan. Um, it was awesome to hang out with you and to learn more about how you make music. And uh, yeah, I, I, it was really great. So I hope to I hope to see you again soon. Yes, me too. Thank you. Really, really thank you for my bad English, but I try. <laughs> I try my best here. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, and thank you everyone, for coming today. Thank you, everybody, for for watching us. Okay. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.